What's going on, guys? It's your boy Kev here, back with another video. We're going over NFL prize picks today. Cannot wait. Let's hop right into it. Um, guys, if you're new to the channel or new to prize picks, um, prize picks is essentially a daily fantasy sports platform where instead of picking specific players and just, just locking those players in, you're actually picking the over and under on the projections of those players. So as you see, Jared Goff is at 15 points. I can you know pick if I think he's going to do better or worse than 15 points, and then I parlay that with another pick or up to five points picks so I can do it two three four five I can take Goff Rogers Cam Akers Aaron Jones and Robert Woods or just Goff and Rogers and the coolest thing that I think is you can do it between different sports so I can pick Jared Goff at over 15 hop over to NHL pick uh, OV at under four or under 5.1 if I think he's going to get four or something. So it's really cool. I really like the fact that you can switch between different sports. I love pairing NFL and MMA. It's just something really fun for me. And uh, I think there's a lot of leverage in this field still. I mean, I see a lot of people making a ton of money off, off prize picks. I see it in the comments. Love seeing that, guys. Just keep keep commenting and just let me know how you're doing. I love to see it and uh, in our Patreon and our Discord, too. People have been absolutely crushing it, nailing five-player parlays, um, you know, winning, winning some pretty solid money. So if you do sign up, please use code DGF. It really helps us, really supports the channel. That's DGF, standing for obviously Daily Grind Fantasy. Um, we're working with them a little bit now, and it, it really does help support the channel. We really appreciate it, guys. And um, now, this doesn't help us out at all, but just for your sake, I like to tell you guys, when you deposit your money for the first time in it, deposit 100 bucks. And the reason I say that is because prize picks will match your first deposit up to 100 bucks so i don't know why you wouldn't just get the most bang for your buck that's what i did um you know anytime prize picks uh draft kings fan duel any any organization like that does a promotion where they're going to match my deposit i'm just going to hammer as much as i can into there because it's free money so why not but again that doesn't help me out that just helps you guys out so something to consider but if you want to do 10 bucks 20 bucks do that too that's fine um but yeah let's get right into the prize picks guys we're going to go over nfl like i said super excited playoff football football sadly winding down to an end here but uh you know let's make the most of it we got jared goff leading the way right now i will tell you right now there's 33 players on this slate for prize picks so i'm gonna kind of piss through this a little bit um it's kind of going to be like a spark note style i'm going to give you guys just quick kind of snippets a little bit of uh, info and then let you know how i'm feeling real quick so jared goff 15 points weirdly accurate for goff um I'm, he's going to have to keep pace with Rodgers, though, so I am going to uh, attack the over of 15. Keep in mind, this game is still the lowest over-under on the slate, though, this week, so something to consider. Moving on to Aaron Rodgers, I mean, this may be the best offense versus the best defense in the NFL right now. I know some people will say, oh, Chiefs are the best offense or Saints are the best defense, this and the other thing, but this, I mean, this still could be. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's right there, so... It's going to be an interesting battle to see how this goes if, you know, the Rams can keep Rodgers at bay and vice versa if Rodgers can beat out the Rams. I think personally Rodgers and Devontae Adams, I think they're matchup proof. So I do think Rodgers is going to hit over 22. He's hit over that mark 75% of his games this year. So I do like the over of Rodgers at 22. Cam Akers at 15. I'm going to smash the over on him. All positive moving uh, in the first three picks here, guys. I mean, we're looking at over for all of them. I mean, Akers is just, he's too many opportunities. You don't get that many opportunities and not hit 15 points more times than not. I mean, I don't even care what the matchup is. He's getting crazy amounts of opportunities. He's had over 22 touches, or 22 touches or more, I should say, in four of his last five games. Um, snapped last game, 28 rushes for 131 yards and uh, a touchdown. Also was super active in the passing game. Cam Akers, I think they were saving him for playoffs, and we are seeing the emergence of a young stud right now. Um, so I definitely like the over of Akers. Aaron Jones accurate at 15.5 i am probably not going to touch aaron jones i just think it's too accurate talk about um opportunities he's just not getting that many he's chilling around the teen mark um it's just not as money not the 22 that cam Akers is getting so I, I really don't love that i also don't like the fact i mean i i think Devonte adams is matchup proof i think aaron Rodgers is matchup proof i think aaron jones is a great player i don't think he's matchup proof and the rams are top three against the run this year so that is definitely going to sway me a little bit on avoiding him as well Two more players I will look to avoid. I will just hop, skip, and jump over Devontae Adams. I'll go from Robert Woods, big jump, to Cooper Cup. Um, I'm going to probably avoid both of these guys, honestly. One of these guys usually hits his over. Other guy usually doesn't. I wouldn't say both these guys consistently eat. Um, I'd say usually it's one or the other. They're both very good players, and I'm not saying they both don't have consistently decent games it's just to hit their projections both times over usually doesn't happen um and i definitely think uh it, it's some it's it's a player group i usually avoid like i usually avoid lockett and metcalf for the most part unless it's DraftKings because one probably is going to snap and one's probably not going to 
not going to do as well. One's going to take the hit because of that. Um, granted, 13.5 and 12 is very easy to get to. I'm still probably going to avoid him. Like I said, there's 33 players on the slate. No reason to be picky and choosy. Um, that being said, I know that... Um, Cup does have a bruised knee, so if he sits, I will hammer the over Woods if it sits around this 13.5 mark. Prize picks does adjust, so don't expect it. But um, you know, to sit there if he if Cup goes out, his projection will probably jump a little bit. But I do love Woods a lot more because I think he is super talented. It's just Cup hurts his production. Um, Devontae Adams 20.2. That's tough. Most consistent wide receiver in the NFL. I think he is matchup proof, proof. Yes, even against the Rams, even against Ramsey, even against how good that team is playing. Um, but 20.2 is really accurate. Even with Devontae Adams' touchdown consistency, he's not the most PPR monster I've ever seen, you know, and that's something that affects that. Like, he, he'll get a touchdown and still end, uh, end up under 20 sometimes. So that does scare me a, a bit. Gun to my head, I would say over, but I might just avoid Devontae Adams in this one, to be honest. 20.2 is just it's a little rich for my blood. Um, moving on to Alan Lazard. I actually feel more comfortable with going under on someone like Alan Lazard. I think he's a good player. I just think he's been hampered with injuries. He still has two bad injuries that have been kind of keeping him out of full practices. Um, he is absolutely not matchup proof. And like I said, this is a great, great secondary in defense. And he's actually been under that 8.5 mark in five of his last seven games since he's been back since his original injuries in the beginning of the year. So I definitely think Alan Lazard is a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a stretch to think that he's a lock for over 8.5. And I'll actually take the under on that uh, moving on to Tyler Higby I don't touch low to mid-range tight ends it's too volatile and fluky of a position to begin with I'm certainly not going to do it with someone like Higby um, Robert Tanyan he's more to that mid-range you know creeping into higher range tight end certainly not that you know certainly better than Higby but that being said I'll probably avoid him too 10 points is very accurate I think you get a get a touchdown he's pretty good at finding the end zone especially with how Alan Lazard really hasn't taken back that wide receiver two role on that team. It is a tough defense still. Again, gun to my head, uh, kind of like the Devontae Adams thing. I'll take over, but I probably will avoid him for the most part. Moving on, um, Matt Gay and Mason Crosby. I don't touch kickers. Um, I just don't do it in prize picks ever. It just doesn't make sense to me, um, especially when there's other players on the board. Kicker is easily the most fluky player, you know, that that we play with in dra in, in in not DraftKings because there's defenses too, but in prize picks. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to touch the kickers. There's just you never know what's going to happen. I mean, it legit has to be like if they drop Justin Tucker at five points, then I'm actually going to touch it. So um, I'm just going to avoid kickers altogether. Lamar Jackson at 26 points. This is interesting. That's steep, but I love playoff Lamar. For someone who gives Lamar Jackson a lot of crap, um, you know, I do think he's very talented still, and I think he's going to run 15 plus times. I mean, the playoffs, I love scrambling quarterbacks and, and people that put their body on the line in the playoff or, or when they make the playoffs because then you don't have to worry about injuries. You know, this is, you did all that injury preservation to get here. So I think they're just going to run him in the ground. If they find themselves down, they have no problem running Lamar Jackson until he until he gets the job done so i really do like lamar jackson over 26 it's a super favorable matchup this game has a 50 point over under and uh huge shoot up potential here so i do like lamar jackson at 20 or over 26 and that'll segue right to josh allen again i really do think this has big shootout potential guys um same, same for Josh. I'll take the over at 26. He just shredded the Colts defense, who are literally the eighth overall defense. Ravens are seventh. So pretty comparable defense. Um, and yeah, I just think it's shootout potential. Josh Allen's been balling out a year. He actually finished in fantasy as the number one uh, quarterback, which is crazy to think about. I mean, it, it just, I mean, I, I, there was a lot of circumstance ending up in that. Dak Prescott going down, Russell slowing down. Um, uh, Kyler Murray got his AC joint banged up and he was on pace for a while too but you know hats off to uh, Josh Allen someone who really stepped up this year so I think this is going to be a really fun matchup and has shoot up potential Marquise Brown I love Marquise Brown guys I think he's been doing absolutely awesome he's balling out Hollywood has been absolutely cruising um, I think he has an awesome matchup and he's been on absolute fire lately 14.5 is not that hard to get to he finds the end zone more times than not nowadays and uh you know i think he cleared 100 yards last game too so he's been looking absolutely great and like i said this has all the shootout potential in the world now moving on to stefan diggs 21 points for stefan diggs it's just too accurate i mean if i, I even though this is vastly different matchups um i'm still if I'm not taking Devonte Adams at 20 point or over 20.2 guaranteed lock, I'm certainly not going to do it with Diggs at 21. I mean, it's just 
I think it's too accurate. He's amazing, but even at 19 or 20, it's just too accurate. I mean, that's I think it's way too high for him. 21 for Diggs is just it's it's not where I want to be. Um, so I'm probably going to avoid Stephon Diggs. Mark Andrews at 13. Very close to avoiding this, but I will say under just because I think he needs a touchdown to clear it. And more times than not, um, I would expect a tight end, even, unless it's Kelsey or even Kelsey. I mean, more times than not, most most players don't get touchdowns. So I would assume Mark Andrews won't get a touchdown this game. Um, I'd probably put that at not a great, you know, maybe 30 to 40 percent chance that he gets one. So there's still a solid chance that he gets one. I'm not super confident in this pick, but um, I still think he needs a touchdown to clear that price point. So I will take the under here. Though, again, shoot up potential. If you want to avoid that one, I don't hate you for it. Cole Beasley, um, I'm definitely going to avoid. Uh, it's too accurate. I'm not touching him. Um, he's just, he's, he, he's, it's, I won't even say it's accurate. He just either smokes it or he falls under it. Um, I'm just not going to go near Cole Beasley. J.K. Dobbins, I'm absolutely going to smash the over. Has hit this six of his last seven games. He didn't last game, but that was a really bad game script. I mean, we saw them fall short early. Uh, Lamar Jackson had to do a lot of work himself. And yes, Lamar Jackson eats into his production, as we know. But I think J.K. Dobbins is good at football, guys. Passes the eye test. He's been doing really well. I'd like to see some more opportunities. But 12.5 is really easy to get to. And he should find some opportunities in the red zone. Um, moving on to Devin Singletary. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but over 12.5 for Devin Singletary. I hate Devin Singletary. I, I mean, this is a guy I put a lot of stock in in the past two years. I thought he was talented. I still don't not think he's talented, but he's such a small player, and you, and you see it in the NFL. He's not making that college transition. It reminds me of, uh, I always have faith in these small guys. It was uh, Duke Johnson. I really liked Duke Johnson when he joined the NFL, and I thought he was going to be a stud, and it was just it, not that he wasn't okay, but it's like Singletary. It's like they didn't, they're not having the same success they did in college because, you know, now you're dealing with Aaron Donald and these players who are just absolute monsters and they just, you can't move on them. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, Singletary sucks, but whatever. Uh, Moss is out and I think uh, Singletary is basically the only show in town now. I don't think it's going to be the TJ Yeldon show. Um, so I, I really do think Singletary should hit the over. Hate saying it, but there's my stance on him. Gus Edwards, I won't touch Gus Edwards. Shouldn't even be on the slate. I, yeah, he gets touches, but I mean, I'm not going to take some handcuff running back in especially where you want to count Lamar Jackson as a running back. Now, Gus Edwards is a third guy in line, so I'm not going to touch Gus Edwards. Gabriel Davis, I'm not going to touch him either, but uh, it's just weird. He had a drop and snap count last week, but overproduced, um, looked really good, even with John Brown back. I don't know what to think of him. He's had some really good games this year. Um, I think he's a good player, I just uh, and he's definitely gaining some clout and some stock in my mind. But it's just not enough sample size, and I, I don't know. I'm just not ready to touch him yet. And like I said, there's there's a lot of good picks on the slate. Um, like I said, if you're just looking at the ones I just told you about, like I would smash J.K. Dobbins over at 12.5 far before I touch Gabriel Davis. Um, Tucker and Bass can kiss my ass. I'm not touching either of them. I don't touch kickers. Baker. Um, Baker. 18.5. He's cleared it more times than not. Um, I think Baker's, you know, he's starting to heat up a little bit. He's starting to be, you know, the Baker we know he can be. Got to have some confidence after just bringing down the Steelers like that. That's going to head into this game. It, this has a stupid over-under, too, um, of, what is it, 50, 57. 57, I believe it was on DraftKings last I checked. So that is ridiculous, guys. A 57-point over-under. Um, I think this is going to be an absolute shootout, or at least has the potential to. Uh, and Baker looked really good last game. I think it was three touchdowns, no picks. So really good last game. 18.5 is pretty easy to get to in a game script like this. That's going to segue right into Mahomes, where I think Mahomes is going to cruise past 26.5. Even though he ended the season slow, I think he, I mean, I think he's going to ball out this game. I think he has a minimum of four touchdowns. I, I feel confident saying that. I think he's going to ball out. It's playoff Mahomes in the highest over-under against the Browns, who can't really stop anything. Um, I, I mean, I know they stopped the Steelers early, but I mean, we saw the Steelers put it together in the end, and uh, I think the Browns had another game like that against the Cowboys earlier this year. They, you know, they balled out early, and then they it, consistently, the Browns cannot stop stop uh, opposing quarterback. So I think Mahomes is going to ball out here fine. And even if they could, it's still Mahomes and a ridiculous offense. So moving on to Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb at 14.5 is interesting. I like the over of this. I like that the Chiefs suck against the run. And I like the fact that Chief uh, Chubb's, Chubb has been more involved in the passing game. He's catching more balls. So I'm getting a receiving touchdown last game. And 14.5 is very attainable for him. And, you know, this is a team historically that has had success running the ball. So I think Nick Chubb is, uh, you know, definitely live in the over at 14.5. Super easy over is Travis Kelsey at 20, which is crazy to say one of the easiest picks on the slate is a tight end over 20, but 
this guy is not real. He is maybe the most freakish at his position. I mean, this is someone, this is a New England fan who got to watch Gronk for as long as I did. And I never thought I'd say this or ever see anything like this again in my life, but Kelsey, and this is sacrilege, and my New England friends are probably going to crucify me for this. Kelsey right now is maybe better than the best Gronk I've seen. Like, this best version of Kelsey might be better than the best Gronk ever. I it's crazy. I've never seen anything like this. This guy is absolutely unreal. Most dominant at his position in the NFL right now. Um, he's cleared 20 points seven of his last eight games, and this is playoffs. So that's it. That's all you need to know. Uh, Tom Brady and Drew Brees. Love Brady, guys. As you know, I just said, New England fan. Uh, I'm not going to touch this one. I love Brees, too. He's probably my second favorite quarterback in the league. I'm not going to touch either of this. I mean, Drew Brees, 19 points. It's just too accurate. He's got a noodle arm now. Um, it's just, sorry, I know Saints fans are going to hate me for that, but it's just true. He Everything's short, and don't get me wrong, Tom Brady's a lot of checkdowns, too, unless he has A.B., Godwin, and uh, Mike Evans on his team. It's a lot of checkdowns, too. Um, but that being said, I just don't want to tr trust Drew Brees at 19. And talk about trust, I'm not going to trust Brady. Granted, it's playoff Brady. I'm not going to trust him against the team he just, you know, absolutely crapped the bet on twice this year. So uh, I'm not going to touch either of these guys. Um, Chris Godwin, definitely something you know you want to monitor his health is 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 definitely the key issue here he's he's banged up um you know limited practice today um both times he played the saints this year he hit the under anyway so it's like do you really want him even if he's healthy i don't know that's one i'm just going to probably avoid for the most part but if you want to monitor his health that's fine too and ending with alvin Kamara, i'll take the over of 20 at alvin Kamara. i mean this offense flows and goes through him uh and do you want to doubt the guy who just had six touchdowns um I don't. So, I mean, Alvin Kamara, absolutely amazing player. That's how you win games, even against a tough Bucks run D. So, thank you guys for tuning in. I know that was a lot, but I want to give you guys the most content we can. That's 33 players banged out and done for prize picks. So, hopefully, you guys have a good idea heading, heading into this. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. We got MMA coming up, and I know either me and Matt, me uh, and TJ, or me, Matt, and TJ, some combo of us will be doing the uh, NFL video for prize um, DraftKings and, uh, you know, I think maybe FanDuel as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And as always, let's cash.